What's going on everybody and welcome back to another video. My name is Reggie Brands and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth. We're going to jump into a very powerful topic today. This video is a message to anyone living paycheck to paycheck. I'm extremely passionate about this topic and I just want to start off by saying this. To anyone who's just making ends meet, just paying the bills, working 40, 50, or even more hours a week just to make all these things happen and it feels like it's not enough. To anyone who's just one bad step away from the lights being shut off, you're not alone. Or maybe let's say you feel pretty comfortable, like you feel like you could be doing better, but you feel pretty comfortable. You don't feel like you're a step away from having anything shut off. You feel like you can still handle your own. You may feel like your savings could look a little better and you could be in less debt, but right now you feel like you're doing what you gotta do. You're going through the motions. You wish things improved, but you're not distressed about your situation. Both scenarios describe someone who is living paycheck to paycheck. And my message for you is you're not alone. For every five people you meet, I could guarantee you at least three of them are living paycheck to paycheck. Some feel that pressure. Some feel that constant voice inside of them that says, we, we gotta do better, we gotta go harder. There's something more that we have to do, or at least I have to get better results so I'm not in the same situation. While others don't necessarily feel that same thing because paycheck to paycheck, looks different now. You could own two very nice cars, live in a very nice place, and have everything, all the bells and whistles, the flat screen TVs, the nice couches, the nice mattress, the nice entire bed, the, enti the whole nine. You could have everything as far as appearances go. You could have the nice attire, you could go on the nice vacations and still live paycheck to paycheck. Or you could be overworking yourself and scraping pennies and saving as much as you can and still be living paycheck to paycheck, still barely just being able to pay the bills and praying to God that nothing goes wrong, that a tire doesn't go flat or that a medical emergency doesn't happen. So there's different ends of the spectrum when it comes to living paycheck to paycheck. But one thing about it is this, you can always do something about your situation. And I'm not gonna sit up here and talk like it's super easy to get out of living paycheck to paycheck. It's actually pretty difficult, but it is very possible it can be done. People have done it time and time again, and there's absolutely no reason why you can't do it. And there's quite a few things you can do to change the situation, but you really have to look within yourself and look at what you're willing to change and what you're not willing to change. That is the difference between someone who's changing living paycheck to paycheck and someone who remains living paycheck to paycheck. What are you willing to change? I can tell you right now, cut back on your expenses and you'll be golden. That's not necessarily true in every situation. Maybe you've cut back as much as you possibly could. Maybe the problem is you're not getting paid enough, or maybe the problem is you have so much debt that you're dedicating so much money of your debt that it's, it's causing you to live paycheck to paycheck. So I say that to tell you, I'm not here to just give generic, plain financial advice that literally anyone can just be like, oh, okay, well, that, that doesn't pertain to me. Because the thing is, even if you could cut back on your expenses, maybe you're not willing to cut back on your expenses. But the first thing you could do is see what you could possibly change right now. And I'm not talking about the little changes either. I'm talking about the big changes. What are big changes you can make? If you cut off Hulu, if you cut off Netflix, that's not gonna be big money that you're saving. Think about and analyze within your own budget, within your own finances, what can I cut back on that's gonna have a bigger impact, at least in the three digits. So here's a perfect example. Let's say Verizon is your cell phone carrier, right? but you don't necessarily need Verizon and you realize it is crazy expensive every single month. Doing something as simple as cutting that plan off and going to something cheaper like something like uh, Visible, they could easily chop off $100 off your cell phone bill just like that, going from 140 ish to $40. It's looking at, do I really need that new car that I just got a few months ago that now cost me $600 a month to pay? You can look at those things, but, it, but it's always gonna boil down to, am I willing to change this or not? If not, you need to be willing to change something, because if not, you're just literally complaining at nothing. Like the decisions you make, the choices you make in life, they are all things that you can control. And then here's another thing you can look at. You can look at increasing your income, which is the biggest thing I advocate for because there's certain things about my expenses that I'm just not willing to change. I don't have a ton of expenses, but you get what I'm saying. Like if I was making less money, I don't see myself willing to exchange some of my expenses for something else. I just don't. And so the focus should be increasing your income. That's gonna be the number one thing I always say, especially if you're living paycheck to paycheck, find a way to increase your income. And of course, 
uh, and of course the first way that most people think is jumping to a raise or promotion at work but the bottom line about this is it's not always feasible to do that they don't just hand out raises and promotions like their candy at work at least not in most industries and as we enter this recession you're going to see that a lot of companies are going to be a lot more tight with their money they're going to be cutting their workforce so you really got to look at what can i do to make more money can I cut somebody's grass? Can I paint somebody's walls? I actually saw this pretty cool video on Facebook earlier today. It said, if you know how to paint, charge $50 per room. And then from there, you can figure out how many rooms you need to paint per week, per month. And then you can figure out how much income you can make just from doing that on the side. It does require a lot of effort, but so does living paycheck to paycheck in general. So does already working 40 to 50 hours a week and feeling like you had barely anything to show for it. Feeling subconsciously like, I, I don't feel secure right now about my finances. That's a horrible feeling, you know what I mean? And I felt like that before, but this is how you start to dig your way out of it. And then with the extra money, you gotta be disciplined with it. You gotta say, look, this is money that I'm not touching. This is money that technically doesn't exist. I'm putting this away as a buffer. And as you continue to build that buffer, your paycheck to paycheck is gonna be less and less because you have that buffer this whole time. Your buffer might start at $200, then it grows to a thousand slowly over time. Now I have a thousand dollars in buffer, so I'm living paycheck to paycheck is a cushion for me. And then once your buffer gets to a point where you're comfortable and only you can determine this, I'd say at least let it get to $2,500. But as your buffer gets to a point where you're comfortable, now you can, go, you can go ahead and say, okay, you know what? This is the buffer that I'm not touching, but this is a little bit of buffer that I'm gonna throw in my checking account with the rest of my money that I'm making. And now I'm not living paycheck to paycheck anymore. And it doesn't just stop at cutting grass and painting houses. You can do so many different things. You can pressure wash houses. It doesn't even have to be physical, like manual type of labor. You can do so much. Like for example, earlier this year, I learned how to format books because I recently wrote a book and it's complete now and it's gonna be out pretty soon. I'm planning on launching it in August, but I had quite a bit of time on my hands and I was like, you know what? Instead of paying someone to format my book for me, I'm gonna figure out how to format it myself. And it turned out to actually be really easy to do. You can actually charge people $400 and up just purely because it, it is time consuming. And if someone has like, let's say 300 pages in their book, you can charge them quite a bit, especially if you charge them like per page. Oh man. And you can freelance these things. You can put yourself out there on the internet and say, hey, look, I format books. Here's some of my work. Here's some of the titles that I formatted, blah, blah, blah. And if it's something that you don't have a ton of experience in, but you know you're good at, you can give them a, a discount, a cheaper price. Instead of $400, maybe you charge them $200. And now you have a competitive advantage against everyone else. I'm just throwing ideas out there because I'm thinking like an entrepreneur. I'm not expecting that everyone has an entrepreneurial mindset. Some people will naturally get raises and promotions at work and that will be more than enough to help get them out of that as long as they don't increase their, uh, their expenses with their income. But there's always something you can do about it. And the third thing is increasing your net worth by getting out of debt. And it's the same exact principle. The best way you're gonna do any of these three, whether it's wanting to save more or wanting to get out of debt. If you're wanting to save more, make more, or get out of debt, the best way to do that is to increase your income and really focus in on increasing it. I'm not talking about giving into some pipe dream where somebody said, hey, click this link on this video and I'm gonna show you how to make $10,000 a month every month for the rest of your life while you just sit down on the couch not doing nothing. That is not how it works. You actually have to put forward some type of effort. If that means, hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick up some overtime this week and I'm gonna do it every week until the end of three months from now. And then we're gonna recap and see how much money I've gained from that and see if it was worth it. That's how you make those incremental changes. You have to find ways. If it's not overtime, maybe it's doing an outstanding job, you get a raise. Maybe it's doing an even better job and getting a promotion. Maybe it's building a network within your neighborhood. Maybe it's using your talents that you've had throughout the years, whether it's manual labor, whether it's some artsy type of thing you're good at, whether it's drawing, painting. If you're really into the gym like I am, you can figure out how to become a personal trainer, make some extra money doing that. Like I'm just saying, it's gonna take effort, it's gonna take time, it's gonna take some sweat, might even take a little bit of blood, but that extra effort is gonna be worth getting you out of a situation where subconsciously you can barely sleep at night purely because you feel like your finances are so low. And I'm gonna tell y'all a story. I have done this in my life, so I'm not just coming out of nowhere with this. I did the grass cutting, I did the pressure washing, and I used my talent, I monetized my talent. 
I was on the drum line in college, killing it on them drums, you know what I'm saying? And after doing so much, after building so much credibility over my entire college career, after traveling to several different states, several different schools, performing on the football field, whether it was Virginia, North Carolina, Maryland, Florida, in the middle of a beach, it didn't matter or whether I was playing at a Carolina Panthers game. I built that credibility because not they're not just gonna let any old Yahoo on that type of football field. I'm guaranteeing you that right now. And so yeah, I monetized my talent. And, I would, and this was when I was making good money. I just wanted to get out of debt faster and I wanted to build my savings. So you know what I did? I invited people over to my place and I taught their kids how to play the drums. And I made some money doing that too. Didn't have no shame in my game. So if I could do that when I was already working over 50 hours a week and I was proactively doing it so I wouldn't feel like I was living paycheck to paycheck, then I know you could do something like that. I know you can. And at the time, no, I was not living paycheck to paycheck, but that's even more reason for you to do it because I could guarantee if I was in a worse financial situation, that's even more drive. Hey. I'm putting in even more hours now. I would have taken all the overtime at work as much as I hated it. I would have doubled the hours I was teaching people's kids how to play the drum. You just have to have that drive and hunger in you. You have to say to yourself, I am willing to sacrifice right now to live a better life later. I'm willing to be a little tired if that means it's gonna change my financial future. If that means my savings account is gonna be bigger. If that means I'm gonna be in less debt after all of this. And I also had to tell myself what I was unwilling to do. I was 100% unwilling to not be able to sleep at night because I felt like my savings wasn't good enough. I was unwilling to be worried about, oh, well, what if I lose my job? Now I don't have enough money to survive. I was unwilling to do that. And last but not least, I was highly unwilling to move back in with family after having moved out on my own. I was too proud, I don't care what you call it, I was unwilling to do that. So if you're living paycheck to paycheck, you've gotta have that strength of I'm willing and I'm unwilling. You have to know what you're willing to accept and not to accept, you have to go for it. Getting me all fired up, I'm gonna I'm I'm calm down, I'm gonna calm down, you know what I'm saying? But here's the thing I really want you to focus on, and this is for anyone living paycheck to paycheck or close to it, no matter how comfortable or uncomfortable you are. This message is for you. You've gotta focus on what you can control. I just, I don't want you sitting around, and this is completely normal by the way, but what I'm doing is I'm challenging your way of thinking so that you grow. And I do this with my friends all the time. Sometimes they hate me for it, but they secretly love me for it. Anyway, whenever you say things to yourself like, well, my job just doesn't pay enough. Well, my rent is too high. Inflation's too high. Groceries, gas, too high. When you're feeling sorry for yourself, when you feel like your boss is just doing you wrong and, and he's not giving you or she's not giving you the raise that you feel you deserve or the promotion you feel you deserve, you feel like you're overlooked, whatever the case is, you gotta really look within yourself and ask this question. What are we doing about it? Because one thing we're not gonna do on this channel is sit around and cry about how unfortunate our situations are. I think it is important to reflect and look at what's going right and what's going wrong, but we do not ponder on what's going wrong. The moment you do that is the moment you lose because you lose up here. When you lose up there, you lose everything. Despite what your situation is, you must focus on what you can control. That's how you embody a winner, and that's how you become a winner. So when you're saying gas is too high, inflation is too high, groceries are too high, what are we doing about that? We can't do anything about inflation. We can't do anything about gas. So I guess what we can do is cut back on how often we travel to then use that gas. I guess what we can control is cutting back on, okay, I'm gonna stop getting these expensive steaks when I go grocery shop. I'm gonna get less expensive things that I can get a bigger quantity of until I'm in a better place financially. My, my job just doesn't pay enough. Okay, well, what are we doing about it? Are you working overtime? Oh, my job doesn't doesn't offer overtime. Okay, well, if it doesn't offer overtime, what other things can you do to increase your income? See, little kids have figured this one out long time ago. They, You see them lemonade stands? They make a product and they sell it. Lemonade. Or maybe it's candy bars or cookies. I can't tell you how many times I've been in the barber shop and the little kids walking around selling candy. So if kids can do it, why can't you do it? Are we cutting someone's grass? And, and the thing I'm challenging you is, maybe you can't do every little thing I'm recommending that you do in this specific video. But what I'm saying is there's more, there's always more you can do. And until you've done everything you can possibly do to change your situation, we can't sit around complaining saying, oh, well, I'm defeated. I, I can't do anything about my, yes, you can. You can do 
you can do so much about your situation. For me, the very feeling of not feeling secure financially would be enough to, hey, I don't care how many hours I gotta put in. I don't care if I'm getting two hours of sleep a night. Look, I've done this. I've gotta get up, I gotta go get it. I gotta do what I gotta do. And for, and for some, you know, if you're single by yourself and you're in the situation, you might not feel it as much as someone who has like kids and people who are dependent on them, but y'all know what I'm talking about. Like when you have that feeling, that fire within you, you keep going, you don't sit around, you can't, you really can't afford to sit around crying about your situation. Cause that's mental energy you're giving to the situation without doing anything about it. See, I'm trying not to get fired up tonight. Anyways, I'm gonna get off my soapbox, but Focus on what you can control. If you can control cutting back on your expenses and it's not really gonna affect that much and it's gonna actually save you a little bit of money to get a little bit of headway, then by all means do it. And there's gonna be some changes you're not willing to do, that's fine. What are you willing to do? What goals, are you willing to set goals for yourself? You can say, look, okay, to, okay. you can say, look, okay, it's June, I'm not where I wanna be. Where do I wanna be in August? Where do I wanna be in September? Are you willing to set quarterly goals? Are you willing to change your mindset? Are you willing to not have a victim's mentality about your situation? Are you willing to be a winner? Are you willing to change your situation of living paycheck to paycheck? That's what you've got to ask yourself at the end of the day. And if the answer is yes, you know what to do. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I definitely enjoyed making it for you. And I hope you got some inspiration, but also some actionable tips on how to move forward with your situation. And as always, if you have any particular questions, you can hit me up via email, or you can hit me up on my website and book a free coaching session and have a nice conversation about money. Anyway, that's the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth, so you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Stay cold.